morning, I look like crap because it's my day off, and, well, I kind of woke up like half an hour ago, but, no, more than half an hour, like an hour ago, but no, no, like 20 minutes ago. Anyways, um, but I've been watching, that's uh, like, my brother was recommending last night, but it was too late to watch it last night, to watch The Silver Linings Playbook, which I'm currently watching, I only got like half through an outline of things I didn't know, probably because they because he's been talking about taking medication, and he's like, I don't want to take the medication to make me soggy and everything else. And then at the dinner scene, I found it funny when Tiffany and him were listing off medications. I was like, hey, I'm on some of those, and I've taken other ones that just didn't work for me. But, and I'm like, well, you know what? He's talking about how he didn't want to yawn because it made him soggy. And Surfwell is one of the ones I'm on. Um, and yes, the first week I took it, I... I was like asleep most of the day, and I don't remember much when I was awake. I was foggy as hell, but the, like the first two weeks were kind of like I'm not even here. But after that, I was fantastic. That's the thing, though. It, with the medication, be on it for at least two weeks, unless the side effects are extremely severe to the point where you can't function or your your health or safety is in danger. After that, then. It, it, the first two weeks, or your body, like, whoa, what's this new thing in my body? I don't know how to deal with it. So, yeah, like, if you if you judge how the medication is going to affect you by the first two weeks, you're not going to get a good feel of how the medication is going to last for the rest of the time you're on it. Now, that being said, there are two medications that I took, and that I stopped taking less than a week, because they just really fucked with my system too much, and my, my safety was in danger. Clonidine being one, and they've done actually multiple studies saying that clonidine is really not good for you, and in fact, prolonged exposure can really fuck with your body's health, it can cause premature aging, blood pressure problems, all sorts of crap, and you actually have to go on other physical, not psychiatric medications to recover from it. Why my doctor prescribed my, although well, it was the child psychiatrist I was seeing, so I was under 18 at the time, um, and that bitch was an idiot, but anyway. Um, that medication just did not do well for me. I ended up, like, I just, the week I had, I was on it was hell. And by the end of it, my parents were scared for my safety, so they told me to go to the doctor saying, like, she is cra That was acting literally, like, fucking crazy. And they didn't know what to do with me, so they, he, the doctor said, okay, fine, you can stop taking that. And here's just a sleeping med so she can go to sleep tonight, because I don't think that's going to be sleep. Next one, I don't remember the name of it, because I've been going on it for like less than a week, but the thing is it was causing me to become extremely depressed, and it was, it was a mood stabilizer to help with my bipolar, but it was causing me to become extremely depressed. Um, <coughs> so much so that it got to the point where I didn't want to go home after uh, one evening. I was just sitting in a park, and I wanted to kill myself. And I was like, what the hell, I haven't felt this depressed since I went on my, you know, anti-anxiety, anti-depression, mood stabilizers and medication for this. It might be the new medication I tried, so I was like, okay, I'm going to stop taking it, I'm seeing the psychiatrist the day after tomorrow, and then as soon as I stopped taking it, I felt instantly better, so obviously that medication wasn't for me, because it, like, if it's causing, like, danger to yourself, then you got to consider not taking it, but if it's just causing you to feel foggy, or weird, or lethargic, or tired or, you know, it's giving you kind of some issues with your bowels, which sometimes they'll do, just give it a chance, because sometimes, because a lot of times it's just your body adjusting to, whoa, what's this new thing in my system, I don't know what this is, and then after, like, because if, if you've never taken it before your body, it, it causes some, you know, drastic changes, but which at first, in your mind is like, what is going on? And then your body's after a while, how like, crap, my hair is just like, molding like Wolverine today. Anyways, and then after a while your body will be fine. Because you have, your body's like, oh, okay, okay, I can do this, I can do this. Seriously, medication? No, you should not solve your psychiatric problem 100% with medication. But you shouldn't, because the way to deal with mental illness, there's two sides, there's two halves to it. There's the medication. Which can, because the thing is that mental illness is caused by two things. It's caused by chemical imbalances of the brain, and it's caused by um, psych like problems in your psyche, like your, your psychological problems and history and all this other stuff. The medication helps to reprimand the chemical imbalances. For example, ADHD 
is believed to be caused by too little of dopamine. And so, which is why they prescribe uh, stimulants, is to raise the dopamine levels and thus allowing you to concentrate better and um, control your impulsiveness and all this other stuff. Yes, it's, a lot of people think that um, ADHD medication will make you go like super zen if you don't you have um, ADHD, but it actually would make you more alert and hyper. Um, and then another thing too, people think that uh, antidepressants will just make you like really ridiculously happy if you take it and you don't have depression, but actually it just makes you really calm and just um, placid, which is kind of funny. It's the complete opposite of what people think. But anyway, so yeah, sorry, I got off my train of thought and. Um, you know, and depression is often caused by, you know, really low serotonin levels or, and also, um, like, anxiety is really high cortisol levels. It, it's all sorts of, like, it, like, I'm not a brain biologist, a neurobiologist or anything like that, so I don't know exactly the causes. And besides, most doctors don't even know exactly the causes, just from my own research. So the medication helps with the um, controlling or helping the... Uh, the chemicals that are, you know, off by any chance, and there's other things that cause the chemical imbalance. For example, me, I have an iron deficiency, but I don't have the normal anemia, you know, that almost every girl has nowadays. I have this really, really rare kind where instead of being an iron deficiency of my blood or my body or whatever, it's an iron deficiency of my brain. To the point where I was getting blood tests for like over a year saying, okay, I have all the symptoms of iron deficiency. And I'm constantly craving things like red meat, and I was like, my favorite cereal was cornflakes, and I don't even, it's not that I like the taste, just my body was always wanting cornflakes, which is very high in iron, by the way. Anyway, so I was like, I was like, I'm craving iron rich foods, I'm tired all the time, I'm weak, and there's nothing I can, I'm changing my diet, I can be super healthy, I'm working out, there is no reason for me to be this, this, you know, weak and tired. And then when I finally saw this, uh, the psychiatrist, um, they're like, oh, it's your depression and your anxiety and all this other stuff. And so finally I saw this like, actually, she looked at the blood test. Like, you see this number 17 right here? That's supposed to be 40, ideally, 40 to 60, ideally 60. Did another test. Is that, okay, down scale to 12. Okay, here is ferrous fumarate, because most of the time you take ferrous glutamate or sulfate for efficiency, the ferrous fumarate. And, oh my god, I felt instantly better, and it really helps with my mental illness problems too, because it turns out when you have iron deficiency, the brain gets the brain chemical messed up. So there's that too. So anyway, back to my story. So medication helps with the brain chemicals, and then the, psycholo like the therapy and the psychologist or the counselor or whatever else, that helps, you know, deal with the psychological issues that cause you to have problems, and it also helps you to find coping mechanisms. For example, um, with my anxiety, um, you know, I do need the medication, but I found a way to calm myself down is with these um, breathing exercises. The thing is that I also have ADHD, so it's hard for me to like just take deep breaths. I actually have to do this thing that my uh, therapist uh, told me how to do. It was basically you take a really deep breath, hold it in, and then blow it out slow, and then you make a mark on a paper. And then you do it until you've done 10, and then you circle, and then you do another 10 until you completely calm down. And I couldn't do other breathing exercises just the deep breathing because the thing is that my ADHD would kick in. I need something to concretely focus on so that I could I could actually, you know, succeed at doing the breathing exercises to calm me down because otherwise my ADHD would kick in and it would get all fucked up and everything else. But that's the thing too, is that everyone thinks differently. Like everyone's own psyche is different based on your own experiences and your own genetics and your own everyone's mind is completely different. There are parallels and there's similarities and overlaps, which is why you're able to treat it um, without you know, knowing extreme details, but everyone, not one therapy method is going to work for everyone. Not one medication is going to work for everyone, because everyone is completely different. But the thing is that you have to recognize is that take the medication. You don't have to take it forever. You, or, well, you might, because some, there's sometimes it's just the brain chemicals are just so imbalanced, there's nothing else that can fix it. Um, but it's oftentimes, more often than not, you just have to take it for a temporary uh, period of time, and and then once it's the problems are you found a lot of coping mechanisms and dealt with psychological issues. Like for example, my mother, severe depression and borderline personality disorder. She was on Prozac. She was on um, I can't remember the name of her anti-anxiety medication. She was on she was on a whole host of medications. 
and all this other stuff. And then she, uh, through ther- a lot, a lot, a lot of therapy, she now is only on one sleeping medication. And that's it. And she's actually doing a lot better than I've ever seen her do, even when she was on the medication. So, like I said, it's not forever. It's just, sometimes you just need to get your brain to the level of, it, it, like, the, like for example, like, I can't think, I can't look at what's wrong or anything else if my ADHD is kicking in every five seconds and I can't focus on a single strain of thought. I can't look at my own history from what, or my own behavior to observe it well enough to correct it. If my ADHD is going crazy, my anxiety is going crazy, if I'm too depressed to even think, or I'm too manic to even think, because when I'm manic, everything's out of control. So the medication helps slow all that down so that we can take a, take a step back, analyze the problem, and fix it. That's what the p- point of medication is, is so that you can stop and look at the problem, because you can't fix it if you don't know what the problems are. So, yeah, take your medication, but see a therapist, because it's like, if you get a severe wound, you have to cover it up with bandages, but you also have to take antibiotics or put antibiotic ointments on it, or else it's not going to heal properly, or it's not going to heal, or it could cause blood poisoning and all this other shit. Medication is the bandage. Therapy is the medicine. Okay? I don't know if that makes sense. But yeah. Okay, I'm going to go back to watching my movie now. Bye!